Mm. Right? Because mm. Switzerland was a neutral country. The only country that was authorized by international law to go in there was Interpol. Mm. But Interpol was given permission by several other governments to use special forces as sheep dipping for Interpol support. So they used some of the Navy SEALs, some of the Green Berets from over here, and some of the special forces from Russia, from China, right. from both North and South Korea. Mm -hmm. And we don't know nothing about it because they're not telling us this in the news because they got to control uh, a sloppy narrative that's falling apart in our face while we watching it, but we acting like we don't see it falling apart. Mm. 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 Damn. You know, you know what I want to do too tonight, uh, um, because I'm not, we, we're not going to be here too long. Um, I want to take a couple. I want to get some of y'all to ask Rod some questions. So, uh, Rod, you mind if I bring a couple of people on stage and they ask you a question? Oh no, no, go right here, brother. Rick. All, right, all right, what one question, family? Don't get on here and think you're going to uh, get a 30 minute consultation from Rod. It's, <laughs> it's, it's one question. Um, I got about. I'm gonna be on here for about a half an hour. I just want to, uh, you know, get Rod on real quick and. Show y'all some love and show. Matter of fact, let me uh, cause somebody mentioned earlier. Let me post my brother Rod Cash App so y'all can show love. I seen somebody said uh, support the brother, protect the brother. S I K. Make sure this brother, he, you know, he wasn't even supposed to be on tonight. And the brother showed love, so make sure let me put this up on the screen. Uh, yeah, yeah so yeah 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 um let me did i put that link in the chat yet let me put it again let me put it again uh for anybody who want to ask rod a question come on in i'm posting the link to the chat come on in uh you can ask one question then um we're gonna you know we're gonna ask a couple of questions then we're gonna get out of here rod I, yo i gotta call you too I, we gotta do another patreon man there's some stuff i want to talk about and i want to talk um do a part two about the, the whole esp thing the extra century perception. So I want to really go in on that. Uh, you know, I'm gonna call you tomorrow. Maybe we can set something up for next week. But um, let me reach you know how we do. Indeed, indeed. But yeah, I, I really like that last one Rod did. Make sure y'all go over to Patreon. The Gathering of Masters is on there. But I did post the um link in the chat. Let me get a question from the chat while we wait for anybody who wants to come on. Somebody said it's Peru named after Her Heru. Heru. No, uh, no, Peru. That's uh, I don't. I didn't do the etymology on the word, but it's not named after Heru. It's just a homonym, but it could be masonically linked through the temple priest to name it that based on the homonym. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Uh let me ask a couple of more questions in the chat. Uh, everybody just talking about Rod's haircut. Let me see some uh, questions in the chat. Okay. <laughs> Do you advise changing your American status and rescinding your USA ID documents? Any, you ain't got to deal with that paperwork. You're, you are who you are. You Your sovereignty is anytime you got to write a piece of paper and send it to somebody to assert your sovereignty, you're not sovereign. Mm. Mm. All right, let's get to I see a couple of people in the back. We're going to get to some, a couple of questions before we get out of here. Family, once again, I want to thank everybody for coming on here. Let me uh, let me just put this back up while we get to a question. Hold up, y'all. Give me one second. Uh, Bay to Maria Bay. What's going on, sis? Hey, Brother Rich. How you doing? All right. All right. How you doing? Where you from? What's your question? I am from the Carolinas, so we got that real high energy right now in the building. Oh, yeah. You know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's. Oh, yeah. We connecting back out here with the world, with the planet, getting uh -huh. energized. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rod Hayes, my man. What, what's going on, sweetie? Rod, you know what? It's been, I've wanted to talk to you for so long. Uh oh, there you go. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something, Rod. <laughs> hey. Brother Rich, hold on one second. I got somebody at my front door. I got to go run okay. to the door right quick. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. No problem. No problem. Hi, yeah. While while we do that. Hey, sis, while we wait. Oh, hey. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Hey, while we wait, let me put Rod Hayes Cash App on the screen. While we do that, hey, sis, what you, are you doing anything in particular 
tonight. They say yesterday was a full moon, partial eclipse. You doing anything? Any any rituals planned? Any anything you got going on that uh, for tonight, sis, or anytime soon? Well, you know, I started um, about a week ago because I felt led to start um, like detoxing. I had like this pull on me where I kind of was like tired. So what I've been doing more so is journaling a lot and um, just staying uh, in tune with my intuition right now, trying to keep my frequency as high as possible. Because mm -hmm. I realized that um, even through these perilous times, um, we still have to tap into ourselves, stay mm -hmm. in ourselves and be, you know, in the world, but not of the world. So, yes. um, yeah, I've been journaling. I do a lot with herbs um, mm -hmm. and that's really a big thing for me. And I get my kids involved because I have five daughters. So they're all young goddesses trying to keep them connected. Mm hmm. But um, mostly just keeping my vibration high, being aware of my consumption of certain things, you know, because yes. what we put into us becomes a part of who we are. Indeed. Excellent. All right. Go ahead and ask your question, sis. Go ahead. Whew, my okay. bad. Appreciate right. that patience. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Rod, I, um, I had a, a dream about you a while ago. And... um. It was after you did the show with Brother Rich talking about tapping into your totem pole animal. And I wanted to ask you this question ever since this show was done about a year ago. Um, <laughs> you said to call out to your totem pole um, animal, your spirit animal, you know, ground yourself on the earth, talk to the earth, and, you know, the connection is already there. So you're just amplifying it with your intention, right? So I did. I have been seeing like owls everywhere following me. This is no Black lie. Girl magic. <laughs> no lie. Like I got pictures of owls. I got feathers from red birds left all over my backyard. Um, I my daughter and I just recently, my youngest daughter, we started, you know, doing some little rituals or whatever with bamboo and stuff like that, right? But this owl, now be quiet, baby. One moment. This is serious. But this owl followed me everywhere for like the past four years but more specifically it's been the last year is that it, owls are just following me everywhere so the one thing you got to do when, when your spirit animal is trying to contact you is obviously the owl the owl govern the guidance through dreams so the owl when it guides you through the dream you know it because it's like you being carried by the owl. You can sense the owl behind you, but you can't see it in front of you. That's because you, you are embodying, the owl is embodying your energy to show you something in the dream realm. It's black girl magic. Um, ain't no other way for me to say it. Black girl magic is the um, highest form of spirit communication between the animal kingdom and um, the human kingdom. So when we communicating and you seeing the red feathers, that's cardinal feathers, it's a cardinal flip, which means it's coming from an ancestor on the other side that's trying to get your attention. But you haven't seen the cardinal, you just seen the feather, right? So nine out of 10, the owl ate the cardinal. Wow which is telling you that there is a superior spiritual force that's trying to contact you higher in rank than the Cardinal. Mm. And it settles on the owl. And normally the ones with the top owl totem, they either got big eyes or big breasts. <laughs> mm. Let me take these glasses off real quick. They're not too big. <laughs> But the 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 slang term for big breasts is hooters, and hoot hoot is what the owl do. Oh my god, that's insane! Bro, where you come up with this shit, man? Where that's insane! Where he does all this shit? Yo, you Look, a bad so, man. <laughs> so when you go to see the hooters, you see the eyes on them. Them are owls' eyes on the hooters logo. Damn, man! How you come? Wow! Up with oh my god! All right, that's that's great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, sis, I, I want to thank you for your call. We're going to get to the next call. Yes, sir. Peace. Appreciate the call, man. <laughs> that, yo, that Hooters thing was brilliant, bro. That's that's crazy, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, yo, Mr. West? 
Oh, man, I love watching you guys, man. Thank you guys for everything you do with the spiritual community. And I've been trying to ask you guys this question for like months now. So All right. hopefully you can answer it. But there was uh, the installation of the Ram Mandir in Ayodhya, I think in um, January or February. I practice Hinduism. So I wanted to know what what that installation you know, mean symbolically and how does it pertain to like the new age of Aquarius that you guys talk about? Okay. For the people that's watching, um, first of all, I didn't hear the exact words you said, but when you tell it, when you, when you say the word again, tell the people the the English translation of it, if you know it. The Rama Mandir in Ayodhya. Uh, Ayodhya is the city that Ram was born in. And Ram is a, a Hindu incarnation of um, a god named Vishnu who comes to preserve civilization. So um, he's talking about the Ramayana is the text. Ram is the heir um, to the throne. Ram was sent into exile by some witches who condemned him before his father and said he wasn't worthy but he was the most worthy among them. So his father allowed him to go into exile for five years before he comes back to reclaim the kingdom. This is also the story where you were introduced to Hanuman in the Hindu tradition in the Ramayana. And Hanuman becomes the companion to Lord Ram as he's making his journey through um, the wilderness um, but this is also symbolism because it's the same story as Hanuman making his journey to the West to find the Buddhist scrolls. So what he's talking about is the um, incarnation of Vishnu, the sustainer, Brahma, the creator, and Siva's the destroyer. The sustainer is the one who maintains the balance throughout the realm of the earth in order for um for everybody to live in harmony. When the balance is lost, then comes Siva to destroy it. And Brahma restores it all over again back to the beginning. So these are the cycles, right? These are your yuga cycles, your great years. It's all talked about through the Hindu doctrine. <clears throat> so what the particular event that he's talking about, I didn't check for it. So I don't have the the exact answer to what he's asking, but I'm familiar with the general concept of the Ramayana and what's taking place in the text. Yeah, we, yeah, we definitely, I got to look into that too, man. I definitely appreciate you asking that question, Mr. GT. All right, please, please tell me in a, a future show, man. Please tell me in a future show. Definitely. I, I, I always come back with the answer. Got you. All right, brother. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. All right, peace. <laughs> Hey man, I feel you almost start beating my chest. Brother, you gotta um I think your computer's on, brother, and I can hear my voice. You gotta turn your computer uh down. There's like real bad feedback. Okay. Check that. Yeah, yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, brother. Uh, yeah, usually let me uh change the settings or something. Just... We're going to get Jake. What's happening, my brother? Peace, family. How y'all doing? <laughs> right, peace, how peace. Doing? What's going on with you? Doing well. What's happening with y'all? All right. Mm -hmm. you, you, you just finished smoking this up, man? Nah, man. I'm okay. good. I'm good. I'm actually sitting here working on some homework with my dog. Excellent, excellent, excellent. What's going on, brother? What's your question? Uh, so uh, I've been recently watching uh been following you brother rich for a while and then started watching you uh going back watching old videos with rod and stuff mm -hmm. and uh got a lot of questions but one question i've been wanting to get answers from is what would you say is the best way to trace your etymology you know like i got families um that's got a direct lineage to the gullahs um and to the choctaw and so it's like, what would you say is the best way for me to like, not just trace it, uh, but also even like in in my family so that they could want to help me trace it as well. 
Well, one of the things that's that the waking it up in your family, most of us family members is not interested. Most of them, you you can put them you can put them on an arm, army of wild horses to drag them through the mud to try to get them. They're not waking up. They're not gonna wake up until the ones who wake up get the benefit of waking up, and then they're gonna be like, "Oh shit, I could have woke up." So, but the 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 best thing for you to do is find a um, the oldest people in your family to talk to, and. Um, go over their story and it's going to tell you where they was from, what they did. It's going to give you information that's going to give you leads to look in geography and find out what tribe was situated where. You know, so a, a lot of it is talking to your elders. And a lot of the elders, like a lot of our elders and crossed over, but we got a lot of centenarians still here. And most of us know somebody in the family that's a hundred years old, but we don't talk about it. You know, 85, 90 years old, but we don't talk about it. They still here. They experience all of that stuff from 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s to the 2000s. And they still here. Right. And we don't want to talk to them because you know, we was raised all oh, that old old fool don't know nothing. They know all of it. They lived it. And they seen the different classifications, the reclassifications, the all of that being taken place, the benefits that was our birthright be given to other people. They watched it with their own eyes. They everybody that's a hundred years old is a walking codex of information. You just have to learn how to question them to get to the part of the information you need the most, but it's there. So I probably should record the conversations and yeah. write notes down. Yeah, because now you can go back, you can review it over and over, you can hear it in a voice. And not only that, in five generations, you'll be able to play the recording for, for your great grandchildren. Mm. We're about to be old as hell. Because they, you know, they they coming out with the tail mirrors, which is a, a pill that extend the tail mirrors on the um on the on the um genes that allow you to recover from illnesses that it, like it's almost a miracle, but it ain't a miracle. Um, then they got the med beds coming. They got the healing pods. I call them the healing chamber, but they call them the healing pods. You know, different stuff like that. So. Um, you that information as much as you can gather from the elders now, and you can have information to share with the posterity of the future because we didn't went through some real tumultuous times in this 500 year protracted struggle against these foreigners. And we so clouded by the enemy that we don't even know who the real enemy is. Yes, sir. You no, know, they look like us, but they ain't us. And they point to somebody else saying that's the enemy. Mm. Hey, Absolutely. Hey, uh, thanks for the question, Dr. J. Thank you so much. You all be safe and uh, may peace be upon you. All right, brother. Peace. <laughs> all right. Shout out to that brother right there. Let's uh, we got Anunnaki Ra. <laughs> Yo, what's good? What's good? What's good with you, God? What's good? I had a question, man. I just want to say I appreciate y'all for doing what y'all do. Um, I'm kind of new to the channel. I just started about two months ago. But uh, I'm from Chicago. And uh, what hit me was, you know, when Rod say I'm Mississippi clay dirt walking because my grandma from Mississippi, uh, she from Tutwala, Mississippi. Uh, my grandfather from Jackson, Mississippi. And then that's on my mom's side. And then I got my uh, on my pop's side. Uh, they Gualagichi, but her last name is Manuel. Uh, but we don't have the hyphen L. So kind of what I want to ask was, how do I uh, understand that information? Because she said her father was a healer and he used to heal with his hands, mm -hmm. uh, the Manuel side. Now, she said her father would always tell her when she was younger that her name was Man their name was Manuel. And it was always a hyphen in the EL. Uh, so I'm just trying to understand that they kind of in doctrine by religion and Christianity. My grandmother was uh, she was a teacher for 35 years for the Chicago Public School District. So they kind of in doctrine in that. And anytime I try to ask her really about her history or anything like that, she got a lot of pictures and 
it's of a lot of prevalent people. They all got suits on. They ain't not no slaves or none of that. And, and we can go back to like the 1890s, 18, 1890s, 1880s, and it's just a lot of people of prominence. So I'm just trying to understand how I can pull that information, kind of like the last question bro asked. How can I get that uh, information? You need to do the search on the name because somebody in your family changed your name to match a biblical um, name. The the name Emmanuel or Manuel is how we pronounce it because we never pronounced in our original language the vowel before the consonant. So we would see the vowel before the consonant. If it's not a double vowel, no vowel will get pronounced. That's how we spoke. So when you, when they saying Emmanuel, they just gonna say Manuel or Manuel because of the linguistics that we are genetically predisposed to. And Manuel mean God with us, which goes straight to your grandfather being a healer with the power of touch, right? That mean that he was a he was probably a Hayoka High chief. Um, there's the closest thing that you could study to understand what he was but he was from a different tribe than the ones who called themselves Ayoka. But we, all of the tribes have a priest, a priest class in a tribe. And in your tribe, in your historical record, your grandfather was a healer, a medicine man, just like mine was. My mother's father was the one of the most prominent healers on the land until he passed away in the late 60s. Mm. Right. And so all of his uh, um, um, clients, they came from all parts of the country. So he was known, right. you know, and this is a cultural phenomenon that many of us overlook when we do our research, because it tells you when you running across ancestors, Sonny Boy and them, Sonny Boy was the chief. And they tell you about uh, Sonny, Sonny Boy. Uh, Son Williams and all of these different names. The son mean the chief. There's, he's represented as the light of the family by calling him Sonny, mm. right? And we get get the uh, modern understanding of it, and we thinking five percent. Man, man, it just sons you. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't right, the right. same. You know what I'm saying? It's the it's the old ways that we used to do things coming into birth in the new age of how we do things currently. And then you got to uh, make the connection between the two. So your family's name, Manuel, they was telling y'all that it was a high priest or a high chief in your family who they gave that name to first. Mm. So trace the name back. You're going to find where they changed the name. And the name of the one that they changed was the one that they were saying was a manifestation of the force of God in the human body. See, it's weird, though, just because my um, my grandmother's mother. Hey, I don't knock you wrong. We're going to have to get to the next question. So I just want to let you know that, you know, but you can say something real quick, no. but I'm going to have to. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. So my grandmother's mother, she. um she got married to this 80 year old man, which was my great grandfather. And that's how they got the Manuel name. So I'm just, last question, last question. Where do you think the last name Sims come from? You think that got any correlation with the Seminoles? Yeah, it's actually the name Sims, Simmons. That's my grandmother's last name on my right. mind. It's, it's a Latin term. Seminole is not, a, it's not a tribal name. It's the name that the invaders gave us. Right. She we was calling that this the same as the Gullah War and the Seminole War, the same war. If if the native is telling it, it's called the Gullah War. If the right. invader is telling it, it's called the Seminole War. Mm. They say we were runaway slaves. We telling them we ain't never been nobody's slave. So mm. now when the youth get it, they don't know how to distinguish who telling the story and who was the slave and who wasn't. That's mm. kind of where I'm at right now. Okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Hey, hey, I appreciate the call, Anunnaki Ra. Y'all be safe, man. Appreciate y'all. You too, my brother. Peace. Yes, sir. All right. Let's keep this thing moving. Shout out to that brother right there. Let's get a sister on here. I see we got uh, Ash in the back. What's going on, Ash? What's your question? Peace. Sir? What's up? What's up? What's good? How you guys doing? All right. Good. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Ron? I always love when I catch your shows, man. You always bring in that knowledge, that fire. 
<laughs> always feel so enlightened. I'm glad I can help. <laughs> uh, so my question is, do you guys have an event? I know, Rod, you have an event coming up, but do you guys have something that you are planning together anytime soon or in 2025? Mm, the only event that I got is going to be close to home. Um, I think uh, one of the uh, one of the family down in Detroit want me to come down there, but I don't have I, right now. I'm not. I can't go distance. Um, yeah. Right. So I got to do whatever I do. It's got to be shuttle close, like almost. Yeah. Real, yeah. real close to where you at. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to tell you happy birthday, Black Magic, or Brother Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Rod, yesterday was my birthday, Rod. So I'm oh, start- man. Uh, uh, on the eclipse? Yeah, on the uh, eclipse. On the eclipse, oh. right? That's, That's some powerful right energy right there. Oh, yesterday, That's some powerful energy. Yesterday was a great day for me internally. Oh, it felt like it felt like heaven on earth. I felt good yesterday, y'all. Felt good. That's what's yeah. up. Felt good. That's what's up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I just... Any other questions, Ash? Any any other questions before we get up? Before we, you know. No, no, no. I just wanted to pop in and say, hey, happy birthday! I love the show, Rod. I love the never on. I appreciate you guys. Doing. All right, I appreciate, I appreciate the call. All right, peace. All right, peace. All right, shout out to Ash calling in. Uh, let's get to another caller. Let me see. We got about fifteen minutes left. 15, 20 minutes. Uh, let's get to. Let's see if uh, the brother Jamal, if he got it together yet. Well, brother, you did. He on mute. You on mute, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, brother. I'm gonna move away from this Bluetooth device, but I turned it off. Why don't you turn on? I'm on the phone. You on the phone? Yeah. Um. Uh, uh, we are gonna, 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 gonna have to get back to that, brother. I don't want to. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to get back to you, brother. You still there, brother? But we're gonna get back to you. I just want to hurry up and get some more folks up in here. Let's get to. Uh, we got Santos. <coughs> Santos, are you there? Yeah. Hey, how you doing, sir? Yes, yeah. Santos. Is there any way, hey, brother you, uh, Rock? No, your audio is a little bad, Santos. Is there any way you could? Uh, Okay, how about now? How about now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me let me ask you something. Okay, what's your question, my brother? Yeah, the question is uh, on angel numbers, um, and I just want to ask, brother Rod, uh, whenever you've seen an angel number, particularly like in a sequence one one one, two two two, three three threes, um, and especially when you're going through something, you know that. You see something, or you're doubting yourself, and then all of a sudden you see a three, 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 like whether it be on a car license plate or or, or what have you. Um, so, what, what what should you do in those moments when you're seeing uh, in, in in the numerology sense? Well, okay. So he, the question he asked, and brother Rich is when you see the angel numbers, the the triple digits, and what you're looking at is a convergence. Right. When you see in these numbers, that's the universe putting a the number there to give you information or it's like the directions on your way to from Detroit to Chicago. If you don't read the signs, you might end up anywhere. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing with the numerology, the angel numbers, the universe put these numbers up and you got to know what the numbers mean to know what the universe telling you. Mm-hmm. So. Study the numbers. And you know, all of the ones, I mean, this is a new beginning. The twos mean something that begun is now taking its next phase. Mm -hmm. The threes is mastery of some sort, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the fours is angel numbers. Angel on the post is 444. Mm -hmm. Angel in flight is 44. The post is just the four. Mm -hmm. Then you got the fives to turn around. Five is changing. I mean, uh, it's about to change. 55 is changing. 555 is all the way changed. It's turned around, Mm -hmm. right? So these numbers mean stuff, but you got to know what the number means and how it relates to what you're dealing with in order for it to be used for, or else it's useless. Indeed. Hey, Santos. Thank you. Thank you. All right, my brother. All right. 
All right, let's keep it moving. Let's get to Sky. Sky, are you there? Are you there, Sky? Yes. Hi. Hey, Sky. Hey. Hey, Ra. I want to ask, um, what is the spiritual meaning of? Excuse me, I had to shut the door. What's the spiritual meaning of blood clocks? Like, um, after I had my first son, I developed a blood clock, and it's like kept leaving and coming back, leaving and coming back. That's that's physiology more than spiritual right so it depending on where the blood clots coming at but it's normally a health related issue right after birth when you have a recurring blood clots but once you know what the cause of the clotting is then you can start to read what the spiritual signature that underlies either the part of the body or the limb or wherever the clot is settling at, um, you can then translate. But without knowing like the cause of the clot, you can't translate. You need to cause the location. It's just like GPS, right? It's the yeah. three parts to triangulate in on what the cause is. Okay, okay. Yeah, because it's, it's in the right leg, but... They did blood testing and they said um, it could have came from pregnancy because they said they don't see that it came from like a factor five or anything like that. So they don't even know. Mm -hmm. So uh, normally what's happening with the pregnancy, if the pregnancy is triggering blood clots, is that your child's DNA and your DNA is clashing in you clock to con contain it if it's directly related to the birth. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, sweetie. All right. Th thanks for the call, sis. All right, All right. Rob. Right. Peace. All right. All right, let's get to uh we got Tamara. Let's get to another sister. We got Tamara here. Tamara, what's going on, Tamara? Tamara, you on mute. You on mute, Tamara. Uh, Tamara, you're on mute. You have to unmute your mic. Okay. There you yeah. go. There you yeah. go. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. Hi. How you doing, Brother Rich? How you All doing? All right. How you, how you doing? How you doing, pretty? Question here. Okay. I've been doing some automatic writing. You have the raw material. Oh, shit. Yeah. I'm, damn. What can you tell me about the raw material? Because I did, like, some automatic writing. I did it, like, three times. And then, all of a sudden, I kept getting raw. Right, right here and there. And then I spoke with someone else. They had the same experience. And then that's when I looked up videos, everything. And then all of a sudden it just came up with the raw material and how they uh a lady was able to channel the ancient astronaut. Mm -hmm. And talking about so, the long point. Yeah, so they had the lady laying in hypnosis with I think the Bible over her head while she channeled the raw messages, yeah. right? They also got a set of material called the Seth material that's done pretty much the same way. Jay right? Roberts. Jay Roberts. Okay, so um, these are channels of thought forms that's still in the ethers that's always been there. And what they're doing is you becoming a um, conduit by which this energy can express itself, right? When, when you talk about Ra as an energy, we talking about, um, for lack of a better way, the UV rays. They are the coding system for the upgrades of the planet that comes in in cycles. As you move close to the cycles, the somebody somewhere on the planet is going to tap into the frequency to download the raw energy again. This is the temple priests of um, ancient Atlantis, ancient came in ancient India, the temple priests used to do it in seclusion. Now we are moving to a collective awakening where all of the knowledge cannot be concentrated on one individual in one location and the world have to revolve around that individual. Now we go into what's like um, an open source data where everybody can tap into the great egregore or the universal mind and according to your genetic frequency, you will be able to download the information that the universe has tailor-made for every individual. 
yours is for you, mine is for me, brother rich is for brother rich. And then we get put together to weave this tapestry of information for other people to have their sparks of awareness. You know, That's so awesome. you study the raw material because you have a particular personal message that's related only to you and your bloodline. And by you studying the raw material, the message is gonna materialize. It's like cream rising to the top. The more you study it, the more the message you was intended to get becomes apparent based off your character, your personality, and uh, information that's coming through and how they sync together, mm. you know? Mm. So um, it's a whole lot of other channel materials out there. I don't want to give too many of them because um, some people would drive themselves crazy trying to jump across bloodlines before they downloaded their own. Mm. <laughs> hey, well, Tamara, I, I appreciate the question. Tamara, let me see that book real quick before you get out. Let me see that book because I, I never got that book, but I always hear about it. Let me put it on the screen. So let me see, son. The Law of One, Book One, the Raw Material. Yeah, because I, I, I literally was just watching a video. Um, and this white dude was talking about that book, The Law of One. So it's interesting mm -hmm. that you bring it up today. I gotta look into that. But I appreciate the question, Tamara. Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> okay, all right, take it. All right, yeah. all right. Well, Shall you talk about the law of one, we're talking about the great law. It's the law of love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't like talking about that love shit because there's too much misery going on. But the reality of it is, is you can't escape it because you can't get rid of the misery until we learn to collectively embrace the love frequency. And we've been saturated with so many different um, doctrines of hate and division that we find every excuse not to do work with good people because they don't look right. This one red here, that one blind, that, that nigga too dark, that nigga too light. You know what I'm saying? We always got an excuse. The sun gonna kill them all. If the sun ain't gonna kill, they ain't killed them all yet, then they ain't gonna kill them all. Whatever the narrative where you can pin it to a doctrine of hate, whether it's through science, whether it's through technology, politics, religion, war, they all stratagems of war. It's only to keep you from ever realizing that at the end of the day, when we get to the conclusion of this great story, it's going to be one individual sitting, sitting there having all of these different ideas as a different person personified throughout the annals of history that comes back to the one in the end, the law of one. Mm. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Right. If the first was first in the beginning, then the first, the last going to be, be made first in the end. It's the same thing. It's just the flipping of the system, flipping of the cycles, the right. changing of the yugas, the year, the great calendar. This right. is, none of this is new. Like when you read Michael Cremo's book, Forbidden Archaeology, and he get to ask some question about artifacts that's older than stuff that they telling us is old. Like, that ain't emo. What right. about this five million year old footprint they found in California that's a, obviously a boot? You don't want to talk about that. What about this two and a half million year old spark plug they found some uh, drilling for oil some hundreds of thousands of feet down? It had to be millions of years, according to the um, geology and the strata and how they determine date by strata. So when they start asking these type of questions, Modern science is stumped because they only start history at 6,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. They don't start history before then. Mm -hmm. When they start history, when they start talking about before 6,000 years, they start giving their fancy names like antediluvian or pre-antediluvian, all of this type of shit. But the reality is, is we do this because we eternal. Mm. We create conditions and circumstances for experiences is for an eternal being to experience itself as it goes through eternity. Otherwise, you'd be guys sitting there by yourself doing nothing on top of a mountain, watching nothing. Right, right. And that, that, what kind of life is that? When you can get down into the ghetto and engage with the paupers. Uh-oh. 
Some of the guys is literally sleeping in cardboard boxes Man. behind the liquor store or in the subway on Skid Row. The guys is there because the, the the strongest ones had to be the infrastructure, the foundation on which everything else is built. But when they when they get their awakening and source tell them, OK, now it's time to change the system then they can't stay pauper guys no more. Mm -hmm. I be trying to stay po. I can't stay po. Mm. The universe keep telling me it's coming, but it ain't time yet. But we ain't going to let you be in poverty because the pauper guy energy is reading the spiritual script raw and uncut. And it's the most disturbing shit you ever want to experience when you first start experiencing it. But as you go through it, you be realizing, wait a minute, I, this ain't new. Mm -hmm. I did this before. When did I do this? And then you start contemplating on when did you do this? When did I see this? Then your life starts re rewinding in cycles. Right, right. Then your collective lives start opening up to you. Mm. Right? So this is your awakening. This We did this. This ain't new. None of this is new. <laughs> it's just a chapter of misery and if you don't feel like you don't want to be here, you didn't experience the chapter of misery. Mm. The ones who experienced it is the ones who suffered the most. That's who was intended to suffer. Mm. But now the suffering then got so comfortable that the ones that's doing all of the suffering will have a knockdown, drag out fight with you if you try to take them out of the suffering. But when you leave the physical body, the joy and the suffering is the same value to the God. Hmm. It doesn't, there is no emotions outside the physical body. It's pure empirical data. Straight binary code system data. There is nothing for you to in-house uh, what's called an emotional body. The emotional body is the side effect of your spirit interacting with your flesh. And you need a navigation system. So you're supposed to learn to read your own emotions as your navigation system as you um, move throughout your life. And then they begin to tell you, it's time for you to do this. It's time for you to do that. And this is what they say, hmm. doing things on God time versus man time, right. right? The God time is the longest taking shit because God don't got time. God time takes so long because God don't experience time. So to God, it's an instant. But to you, it's a knockdown, drag out, drawn out process. Mm -hmm. And that's because when you leave the physical body, time doesn't confine you. When you in, when you go to sleep for eight hours, you have a hundred different dreams, but you only remember the most important ones. Oh, yeah. Right. And. In that eight hours, you didn't live lifetimes in your dream. And then you woke up and you was like, whoo, that dream was so real. I will never want to experience that again. You just remembering something you already experienced in the state of the dream. Right. So this is where all of the uh, the awakening and all of that, all of the convergence for the awakening, moving to the singularity. The law of the one, which is the law of love, versus the law of the two, which is the polarity to love, which is the opposite, which is the hate. So now you have the twin pillars, severity and mercy, right? And they got Samson tied between them, begging for his locks to roll back because he should have never told that slimy slut that his power was in his locks. Right, right. But he told her because why? A man in love is a damn fool until he realized that he's in love and he realized that he don't have to be a fool in love. He can love without being a fool. He can become the wise man. And that's the remedy to the man in love being the fool is when he realized I'm not going to be your fool. The only other option is I have to be your wise man. Mm -hmm. I have to solve your life's condition as a wise man in order for me not to be the fool. Otherwise, I'm just a damn fool peddling through life um, on a leash to this, this person that I love. And people will use love to do more dirt to you than the people that say they hate you. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, the people that say they hate you try to avoid you. 
But the ones that swept and down, they love you. Them the ones that's constantly fucking you over. Them the ones constantly crossing you out, undermining you, chopping you off at your knees, killing your dreams. You'll never be a singer. You don't sing good enough. But I write great songs like R. Kelly. <clears throat> right? But R. Kelly wasn't supposed to be big as Michael Jackson because he don't have that voice. But he got that pen. So mm. the, the universe have a way of strengthening you with your strength applied to your weakness if your weakness is your goal. Mm. So you, you got to make your weakness a strength and you got to maintain your strength while you do it. If your strong point is a writer, then write the songs that accommodate your vocal styling. Mm -hmm. This is what make great songwriters, singer songwriters. They got a whole collection of time life music called singer songwriters of people who wrote songs that was one hit wonders. They wrote it themselves though, and they knew exactly how to sing it to get the optimum performance from the song. It's mm -hmm. the same with painting. Hell, the, the movie uh, Eddie and the Cruisers is based on the life of a, a writer named Arthur Rimbaud who wrote one massive selling book and disappeared. And they thought he was dead until they found him on his deathbed 60 years later. Right. So all of these stories that's being played out in front of us, they only here for one reason. To bring you to the attention that you are the one. Mm -hmm. And whoever is listening. I'm talking to you. Mm. I'm not talking to me. I'm talking you the one that you've been waiting on. And Malachi York said it better than anybody I ever heard. He said, the helping hand that you're looking for is at the end of your own arm. Mm. As soon as you realize that you can start to build your um, life how you want it instead of letting all of the loved ones hold you down with dead weight. Oh, you would never be uh, a ballet dancer because you started when you was 12 instead of when you was five or you will never be a professional boxer you know because you ain't applying yourself because you let everybody else's doubts creep in and tell you what you can't do mm -hmm. the greatness of man and the greatness of the self is to realize your skill set and then find out where the universe wants you to use it at and you can't help but be great mike tyson amazing right Hey, look, look, if Mike Tyson in his prime would have ran into Stan Tukey Williams in his prime, whew, we talking about knocking sparks off each other. Whew, man. They both known for them hands. The yeah. difference, what's the difference? Big Tukey was natural. Mike Tyson was the best trained fighter in the history of the game. Hmm. Right? Now, Mike becomes the philosopher of war and combat. <laughs> after the collective experience of going to war with the likes of Razor Ruddick, Evander Holyfield, Bone Crusher Smith, Pinklin Thomas. He went in there with gladiators and he came out victorious. But when Don King got a hold of him, now the serpent rears his head and he loses to the stumble bomb. They call him a stumble bomb for a reason. Because if you slipping up on your game, he have the right motivation. Buster Douglas' mama just died. Mm -hmm. He got the right set of circumstances. Mike Tyson is over there fornicating with as many Japanese hookers as he can, and he's bringing his celebrity homeboys over there to indulge with him. Yeah, like Bobby Brown. Yeah, he said that. Mike said. So this is what you call creating the perfect storm for a loss. Yeah. Buster Douglas in his in his training level, there's no way he would have whooped the same Mike Tyson that Michael Spinks fought. But when you have him going through his love drama with his girl, crashing his Bentleys in the trees out of emotional distress. Mike was wild. Mike was wild. Mike said during the Spinks fight, he had two different women in the crowd. He said Mike was a wild dude, man. I don't, yo, he was wild, man. Shout out to but, Mike. But, but who gonna tell him he can't be who he is? Because yeah. he got the, he he got these to back up him proving who he is. Right? <laughs> it's a whole lot of cats, but they all got to come with something else. They can't come from here yeah. and tell Mike what to do. Ask Mitch Green. He tried it in the clothing store and came out with a shiner. 
Yeah. See, so <clears throat> we talking about aspirations of greatness. It's killed by the loved ones trying to protect you from the greatness that you're going to incur because the conditions we went through 